Bridging the Gap, A Young People's Guide to Living in Japan. Brought to you by Kakehashi, in partnership with the Sasakawa Peace Foundation and the Commission on Filipinos Overseas. When you travel or move to a foreign country, your personal and travel documents must all be in order. You need to carefully study the conditions of your stay, the required immigration procedures, and the obligations you may have. Here are the important laws or regulations that apply to foreigners staying in Japan. Upon entering Japan, whether for a short-term visit, a long-term work or study program, or even to take a permanent residence, foreign nationals must undergo proper immigration procedures and satisfy the conditions for landing indicated in the Immigration Control and Refugee Recognition Act. A valid passport issued by the Department of Foreign Affairs in the Philippines must be presented together with a visa issued by a Japanese consular officer in the Philippines. Entering Japan without a valid passport and visa or using a fake or tampered one is strictly prohibited and considered a violation of the Immigration Control and Refugee Recognition Act. A certificate of eligibility is issued by the Minister of Justice of Japan after examining whether or not the conditions for landing related to the status of residence being applied for have been met. Upon arrival in Japan, if the conditions have been met, the immigration officer will take a photo of you and collect your fingerprint and a seal of verification for landing will then be stamped on your passport. All rules, regulations, and laws in Japan apply to all foreigners and young people coming to the country, whether for a short-term visit or long-term stay. And violations of the Act on the Control of Immigration and Refugee Recognition may be punishable by imprisonment for up to three years or by a fine of up to 3 million yen or by deportation. Here are the qualifications required in applying for permanent residence in Japan. First, be a person of good conduct with no criminal record. Second, have a stable job. Third, you must have stayed in Japan for more than 10 years consecutively and must have had work permit or status of residence for more than 5 years. Fourth, you must have proof of tax payment and contributions for pension and health insurance. And fifth, be in accord with the interests of Japan and you must not be considered a threat or burden to society. Japanese people are very polite, respectful, and are known to value hard work. It is important for you to know the character and understand the values of the Japanese as you start to live in Japan and become part of a Japanese community. Here's how to adapt to Japanese customs and manners. Number 1. Respect rules and regulations, such as falling in line in public places. Number 2. Respect privacy. People are often quiet on the train or bus. It is the way they show respect by valuing the privacy of other passengers. And number three, show courtesy when visiting someone else's home. Before entering someone's home, people remove their shoes and bring a small gift as a sign of courtesy and humility. Japanese society uses honorific speech or keigo. It is attached at the end of a person's first or last name. San can be used both formally and informally. Sama is used for people of higher rank. Kun is used when talking to young boys. Chan is used to denote endearment. In Japan, there is also the culture of bowing or ojigi. Instead of shaking hands or giving hugs, bowing is the traditional form of greeting in Japan. It serves as a way of showing respect, but it is also used to thank or apologize. Starting life in a new country can pose some challenges. One of them is learning the country's language. It will be a lot easier and a much more pleasant experience if you could speak, read, and write in Japanese. It will improve your day-to-day -day interactions. Here's how you can easily learn to speak Nihongo like a pro. Japanese or Nihongo is the national language of Japan, spoken by around 127 million native speakers, and is the ninth most popular language worldwide. There are three different types of characters used in the Japanese language, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. If you want to learn Nihongo, there are Japanese language classes held by prefectural and municipal governments that are free or at a moderate cost and open to everyone. It is usually held in community centers, empty classrooms, churches, etc. 
There are also Japanese language schools or Nihongo Gakko. These schools cater to those preparing for school, work, or examinations. Classes are usually held for four to five hours a day. Special classes at municipal schools are conducted for newly arrived foreign students entering elementary or high school in Japan. Also, the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare commissioned the Japan International Cooperation Center to implement the training course for promoting stable employment of foreign residents. Here are some ways to level up your Japanese language skills. Number one, talking with your friend in Japanese. Number two, watching Japanese movies or TV shows. And number three, reading Japanese books with a translator or dictionary by your side. Education is one of the most valued parts of Japanese culture. Japanese parents do their best to ensure that their children have access to great educational opportunities. Here's what you need to know about the Japanese education system. Education in Japan is free and compulsory from elementary until junior high school. No grade skipping or grade repeating is practiced. It is based on a 6-3-3-4 system. Six years in elementary school or shogakko. Three years in junior high school or chugakko. Three years in senior high school or kokko. And four years in university or daigaku. The early childhood education focuses on guiding children in developing their character rather than in teaching them academic skills. At the age of 6 to 15, Japanese children must enter and graduate from elementary and junior high school. After graduating from junior high school, students who want to study further must find a senior high school of their choice. This is the time to explore their interests and to find out what they are good at so that they can decide on a career they are interested in for the future. In Japan, higher education starts upon the completion of 12 years of formal education. It is advisable if they want to acquire specialized skills and techniques after high school. From there, they can already start applying for a job. Here are some facts about finding a job in Japan. Job hunting in Japan is called Shushoku Katsudo or Shukatsu. The job you find will depend on what you are looking for, your qualifications, and the job openings at the time. There are four types of employment. First, the regular worker or Seishain. It is a full-time employment. Second, the part-time worker or Arubaito. This type of employment has working hours that are less than those of regular employment. Third, the contract worker or Keiyaku Shine. It is a fixed-term employment. And fourth, the dispatched worker or Haken Shine. It is an employment where a person is dispatched to work for another company. Here are some ways of finding a job. First, seek advice from your school teacher. Second, attend career seminars. Third, Check bulletin boards, newspaper ads, or job magazines. Fourth, ask around in local Filipino communities where they can refer or introduce you to companies. And fifth, sign up with reputable recruitment agencies or internationally oriented job hunting firms. Part of finding a job is preparing for a job interview. Here are some tips to prepare for your interview. First, do your research about the company and the position you are applying for. Second, prepare your curriculum vitae. Third, be on time on the day of the interview. And lastly, come properly attired and groomed. That's a brief introduction of living in Japan. I hope you learned new things and enjoyed my tour. Bridging the Cap, a young people's guide to living in Japan.